Hello and welcome to More Than Organized Monday. I'm Miriam and today we're going to be talking a little bit about email and um, why Inbox Zero may not be the best approach. Um, two things happen when you go when you try for Inbox Zero. One, it's a lot of busy work because you feel very tied to the notifications and making sure you get everything done and it puts the priority on processing email rather than getting on uh, um, the focus onto important things that need to happen. So that's number one. Number two is when you don't do it, it can make you feel like a failure because you didn't get to inbox zero. And sometimes when you do that too often, it can feel defeatist. It's, it's not good for your brain to think you can't do things by the evidence that you didn't do it the way inbox zero says to do it. So I have found, especially for perfectionists, that inbox zero is not the best approach to your email inbox. Instead, I recommend a process. It's the same process I use in the one minute mail solution um, for sorting your inbox into the key categories. And then you set time aside to process those categories. Um, so what those categories are is, you know, if is it immediately junk or uh, trash. Just delete everything you possibly can and more on that in just a minute. Um, there's going to be some things you need to enter and they're going to be quick, like enter this date into the calendar or enter this contact information into your CRM or your contact list. Those kinds of things um, are quick and just put them where they need to go and then delete the email. Um, there are things that you need to keep like archive, just the info, like let's say login information or photos from your nephew or something like that. And you just archive them. Um, so they're always searchable, but they're not in the inbox anymore, right? Um, and then there's stuff that's going to be about bills and or correspondence. It's the same as in the mail solution kit. Um, bills and correspondence is the stuff you have to take action on this week. So it is actually bills to pay or notifications that money came out of your account. There's going to be um, things you may need to reply to in terms of a doctor's appointment or an insurance thing, or maybe it's just some correspondence with some friends. So I recommend actually putting together a set of um, folders in your inbox that is just these, these five things you can do with paper. You, if you're Life is a little more complicated and you deal with a lot of uh, work emails, you can subcategorize some of these as well. And I'll tell you how I do that in just a minute. But really, you want something, a place to put to read. So all the things you want to read and review that you aren't sure about yet or newsletters, things like that, you can make that. You can have one that's money. I have one that's just money. So I pull all the bills to pay or things to reconcile in there. And then when I reconcile or work on my Monday money on Mondays late afternoon, I can just go to that folder and process those. Um, to enter, like I said, they go right to trash after you've entered them. And um, if you have something specific going on, like a project or um, some employees or coworkers that you work on a team with that you may need to keep slightly handier, um, correspondence together, you can set up that folder. Um, the trick is not to get a gazillion folders. The trick is to keep it less than 10. And I used to be very diligent about making a folder for every kind of thing I processed. And yes, it was easier to find things. Yes, easier than search. And it that's a topic for another day, but we will get there. Um, However, if you have too many folders, you still have to look through a lot of folders to get to the one you want. So I do recommend just the five, right? Well, there's trash and junk, which automatically already have their folders. You can just move them in there. There's the archive, which is already in existence. So you can put it there. So then I have to read and to pay and maybe uh, the current big project. Um, for me, I also include one for each of my current clients just so that that stuff is super handy. But other than that, Nothing else is there. Okay, one more bonus folder you can put, and that's waiting for. So if you order something online or you ha have, um, like I keep my Zoom details for upcoming meetings in there just in case my calendar goes kaput. 
Um, I call it waiting for or upcoming. And you just put the confirmations for those things you ordered or things that are coming up in there and you have it and, and you can clean that out fairly regularly at the end of each week. Um, and it doesn't get too out of hand. All right. I hope this helps. If you would like some more information on email and mail processing, don't forget to check out the One Minute Mail Solution. Um, it's the free download at morethanorganized.net. And um, yeah, I'll see you next week. We'll go a little more in depth into a couple fine tuning points and um, we'll take it from there. So don't forget in the meantime to follow, like, subscribe, tell all your friends because it's just more fun when we do this together and I'll see you next week. Have a delightful day.